In this worked example, we're taking a look at the question, four solid steel rods, each of length two meters and cross-sectional area 250 millimeters squared equally support an object weighing 10 kilonewtons. The weight of the object causes the rods to contract by 0.10 millimeters. What is the Young modulus of steel? My first suggestion is to draw this, you know, sketch a figure. So we've got like, like a table like this. And each one of these, you know, legs here is a steel rod. And we know that the length is two meters. And we'll just sort of consider one of them. Uh, in order to solve this, because the Young modulus for any piece of steel should be the same, doesn't matter which sort of leg we consider. We're putting on top of this a 10 kilo newton weight, and it says it's equally supported, okay, equally supported um, by all of those steel rods there. And we know the contraction. So the contraction here, if we think about this as a Young modulus problem, and we know that Young modulus is force over area, the stress over extension or compression in this case, right, over original length, that's the strain, the stress over the strain is the young modulus. And so perhaps for this one, it's better to sort of reorganize this like one fraction, FL over AX, because we're solving for this, we should be able to like substitute in these four things, okay? A tricky thing about this as you read through it is like, well, right away you might go, oh, area is given. That's nice, but it's given in sort of not the units we want if we look at it per square meter, not millimeters squared. I suggest that you convert square and cubic units by writing it out like this the first few times that you do it to remind yourself that the way to convert from square millimeters to square meters is to cancel out the millimeters twice. Like if you just realize there's a thousand millimeters in a meter and you divide this by a thousand, you have not correctly converted it. You've got to divide it by a thousand twice to cancel out those square millimeters to get to square meters. So really the, the way to convert this into square meters is to divide by a million, right? 10 to the three times 10 to the three or 10 to the six. This is such a typical mistake that physics students make. I'm really trying to emphasize this now to everybody to learn it the easy way, but don't learn it the hard way by making the mistake on the midterm, getting it wrong, and it costs you all the marks. So it's like, oh, I had everything else. I needed a modulus. I needed to convert this millimeter to meter because it was just a linear dimension, not a square one. I, I dealt with the kilo. I knew that that's 10 to the three. Um, and I didn't convert the square millimeters right. Like, don't let that be the thing that stops you from getting the correct solution. Okay, so we, we'd convert the square millimeters into square meters by dividing this by a million, right? There's, there's a million square millimeters in one square meter, right? 10 to the three times 10 to the three, 10 to the six. So while we're thinking about it, let's just do that. 250 divided by a million is 2.5 by 10 to the negative four. So we've already sort of got the area, I'll write it over here. Area equals 2.5 by 10 to the negative four. And now we're in the good units for that. So we'll have force in newtons, eventually, right? It's in kilonewtons now, divided by the area in square meters. And that's what you get when you convert it correctly. This L right here, two meters, they kind of gave us that. And we don't really have to do anything with that. We do have to consider that the, the weight is equally you know, um, distributed amongst those four rods. So the way that I sort of think about this is that if I've got a 10 kilo Newton weight equally supported by four things, how much weight is like on each one, so to speak? Yeah, we just divide this by four. We'd say, okay, I can kind of just consider that it's like there's a 2.5 kilo Newton weight on this rod. And I could kind of like think about it like that, right? Like there's a 2.5 kilo Newton weight sitting on each one of these causing this contraction. And that's, I think, a very tricky thing about this problem. I think students that are, have done enough of these calculations, I'd be like, oh, you're not going to catch me with square units or, or you know, conversions kilo. I know milli is 10 to the negative three. I know kilo is 10 to the three. But you don't divide this 10 kilo newtons by the four rods. I think that's a tricky thing about it. In other words, the correct force that we're going to apply here is the force of 2.5 kilo newtons, okay? Because we're, we're equally supporting that 10 kilonewton weight with a four rod. So that should be the force that we plug in. 
the area we've solved for. So we could get the, um, the stress right now, right? Just divide that by 2.5 by 10 to the negative four. And in fact, that's one by 10 to the seven. So 10 million, 10 million Pascals, right? 10 to the seven. So you can just 2.5 divided by 2.5 is one, and then three minus negative four is seven. So one by 10 to the seven would be the stress. Remember the stress is F over A. Hey, that's, that's further good review. Stress, force over area. Strain, extension over original length. And that's why those, those are different ways to think about Young modulus. All right, the extension we're given here, but we have to do sort of the same conversion. We need to convert 0.1 millimeters into meters. And so let's, let's sort of do that here. The extension is 0.1 millimeters and there's still a thousand millimeters in one meter. I prefer to divide by 10 to the positive three. Like you could also think about this as like there's 10 to the negative three meters per one millimeter. And then it's like, you got a negative exponent in the numerator or just put the positive exponent in the denominator, same thing, right? I, I just prefer to work with positive exponents, but I'd rather remember there there's a thousand of these in, in one meter than 1,000th meters per millimeter. That's more confusing for me. It's already confusing enough. We don't need to make it more, so. So this is one by 10 to the negative four then, right? Millimeters cancels, we're in meters, and we get one by 10 to the negative four meters. That's the extension. The original length was given, nice, you know, two meters. And so there's a small fraction of the total sort of length that it is compressed, right? Because it's steel. So you, so you wouldn't expect it to like change its shape too much. And we're not putting it on a spring, right? It's just a, a solid steel rod. And so if we do one by 10 to the negative four, the extension divided by two meters, the original length, we realize that this value here, epsilon, okay, the, uh, the strain is five by 10 to the negative five. We have five by 10 to the negative five. And then this one, remember, was one by 10 to the seventh. So stress over strain, see how, how low the strain is. And that's how we get a pretty big value, regardless of what the answer is, look what we're in, we're in either 10 to the 11 or 10 to the eight. So it's a big number, okay? And that's because of how tiny the strain is, right? We're dividing by such a small number here. So you could take that ratio or you could plug in each of these values into like this form right here, like multiply this force by two and then divide by this and then divide by, you know, the, um, that, right? So make sure it's the one in meters, right? This right here, I have X over L. So I've got epsilon. Right. You just got to kind of keep track of everything. Um, right? There's L, there's X. X over L is this. There's F, there's A. F over A is that. And that over that is B. Right? You type all that in your calculator. You get 2 by 10 to the 11. Which I think we eventually realized was the, the solution by the press of elimination. If if you don't divide by four, what would happen? I think you get you get this answer. And if you didn't do like a conversion here, you'll probably get like one of these, you know, orders of magnitude. So you kind of see how the answers are different. There's always an answer that's nearly correct that's designed to capture those students that that sort of just made that typical mistake. So students that did everything correct besides, you know, dealing with this, there's four rods sharing in the burden of this 10 kilonewton weight um, would maybe incorrectly calculate D. And that might be, you know, sort of what most students did. So it's like, okay, you want to be those handful of students that have got every sort of part of the question correct. You size it up, you need to convert kilo, you need to convert, you know, milli. Um, and then the tricky thing is just, thinking, how, how do I deal with the fact that there's four rods on this table basically supporting this thing? So split it up, you know, like that. So this is a review of Young Modulus. It's been another worked example with Dr. Schleich. See you next time.